Hey guys. Um, yeah, we are here for the second session of the meetup, meetup number 19. And today we have three awesome guests with us today. We have Jimmy Fru, head of music and co-founder at Emanate. We have Achilles, product manager at Async Music. And we have Wendo, founder at Dow Records. For those of you who don't know, my name is Bobby. I'm the co-founder and CEO at CoinGecko. And for today's team, it will be, talk, we'll be talking about what's next for music NFTs. So and music NFTs is like the next big thing uh, that, that will be going out. And we have three experts to, to talk to us about it today. So let's get going, guys. So uh, maybe I'll invite you guys, uh, three of you, to briefly introduce yourself and tell us about what you guys do in the crypto space. Wendy, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, my name is Vandal. My mother calls me Jason. Um, I'm originally a hip hop artist from Canada. I spent uh, a long time living in Malaysia, um, stumbled into the crypto space in around 2017 and fell in love with NFTs around the end of 2019. And uh, we formed Dow Records, which was a bridge from the traditional music industry into the Web3 music industry. And since then, we've been experimenting with NFTs, specifically around uh, creating an ecosystem for music, as well as onboarding and building community. And uh, since then, it's just been a wild ride down the rabbit hole. And I'm sure as, as many of us here can attest to, uh, it's been quite the exciting journey. And I'm so thankful for being here. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, CoinGecko. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Jimmy, do you want to go next? Yeah, well, yeah, thanks for having me and hi to Vandal um, and Achilles. I, I hope that's how you pronounce your name. I've probably butchered it. But um, yeah, I'm Jimmy Fru and I've had a background for 12 years in music. I've basically been a musician half my life. And um, for the last four years, I've been working on a Web3 music platform called Emanate. Um, and we're set to help both music creators and fans and offer exciting ways to collect, share and monetize and distribute the music that you love um, and also empower users to build and engage a community that really matters to them. Um, we believe you should be rewarded for creating the music you're passionate about, sharing the music you're passionate about and investing in what you're passionate about. Uh, so that's me in a nutshell. And yeah, grateful to be here and excited for the conversation. Achilles. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Achilles. I wonder if it's a coincidence that all three of us music folk have uh, facial hair. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's not. There's, there's something there's something there. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing project <laughs> Art, um, in particular focusing on music. So what we're trying to build is a seamless uh, but granular creator tooling. Uh, that means that you're able to go from like ideation to launching uh, an NFT, uh, music NFT that's sort of crypto native, right? So that leverages the power of the blockchain, not just for distribution, but also for creative methods uh, and use cases. And then also we're trying to um, establish partnerships that allow you to then um, display this NFT or make it live in, in all sorts of different places from displays to different merch partnerships. So like a one-stop shop for musicians or music collectives and artists to sort of go from ideation to like launching uh, a collection uh, in the most seamless but yet granular way possible. That's awesome to hear. So I guess I guess my one of first um I mean we've started seeing like how in crypto like it kind of moved in trends. Like in 2020, we saw DeFi going mainstream. 2021, we saw NFTs in particular, uh PFP and, and art-based NFTs taking the world by storm. Um, however, we haven't really seen the hype uh hitting the music NFTs yet. You know, when, when NFTs took off last year, it was mainly um uh art, PFP to some extent, game items. But music NFT has been kind of under the radar. So I'm curious to hear from three of you. Like, why do you think that is the case? Um, I'll, go, I'll go first. Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, apart from the sort of boring answer that's the infrastructure is there yet, the sort of, um, you know, major movements to enable the um, seamless transaction or creation that's not there yet. I think the main reason is that there's a certain immediacy with visual art, right? Just like kind of strikes you, uh, which allows for like a quicker, uh, development of an ecosystem around that. Uh, music is an active creative form, right? You have to be there and sort of like spend three minutes of your time or 30 seconds or five minutes or however long it is and actively engage with something without doing much else necessarily. So I think that that requires 
a different sort of infrastructure, both on the distribution and the creative side than, than visual does, which is just an image on your, you know, you can scroll through hundred of them in, in a minute, right? So I think it's a different, uh, completely different medium. So it will take more time. Yeah, I, I would say too, is like, it's a journey, right? And like, it's the obvious visual component that makes some of these things so attractive initially. And maybe it takes a little bit longer for people to kind of grasp the concepts of what an NFT is and where it can be applied. And so like music might not be the first obvious one, but like when you kind of peel away the layers, it becomes really obvious that this is incredibly powerful. I think if you look at my Twitter feed, it's all about music NFTs <laughs> personally. Um, but, but with that said, I, I think that, you know, like with, with the way that NFTs are presented to creators, strictly coming in from the uh, perspective of art, um, I think a lot of the models that were set forth were presented in, in the way where visual artists could then mint their NFTs and present them to their audience. And I think there, that we haven't yet found uh, a, a vehicle or, or a method that represents uh, music in the way that it makes sense for music as an art form to be distributed uh, as an NFT. So that would be my perspective. There are many different kinds of um, genres of music out there. Um, do you see any particular genre kind of making a, a big push into music NFTs or do you kind of see this across the board on all genres? And, and, and then an extension like for your products or at async music and, and MA, do you guys focus on any particular genre? Yeah. yeah, I mean, for us, we're like pretty focused on it only because my background has been heavily in that area um, and, and also my two other co-founders, but like, you know, guys like Vandal are on our platform and we've got um, amazing community, a guy, DJ Lethal Skills, who they push like the hip hop rap vibes and um, yeah, shout outs. Um, and, and yeah, we encourage all, all genres, but what we found interesting is especially with the web three music stuff is like, you, I, I feel like we at least need to focus on one particular kind of realm and only because historically electronic musicians have that technologically savvy background. So some of these new ideas and new processes aren't completely foreign to them because they're more open to learning about it more. Yeah, I would, I would second that. Uh, electronic music looks like the more sort of like immediate fit. Uh, we don't focus on anything specifically. I think uh, there's interesting uh, applications for all genres. What I have found surprising though is sort of how uh, quickly classical music NFTs uh, populated the space and how well they were received. I think it has something to do with the fact that they were, uh, the, the monetization model is particularly bad in the classical music industry, right? Like, you know, you, you, you think labels are bad, look at the way that classical musicians try to monetize, it's very, very hard. They rely on grants mostly. Um, so being able to do that, I think was, was a big push. And also, you know, just the idea of the artifact um, of classical music as being a very sort of like, um, almost religious experience, I think, lends credence to these things being valuable in a way, maybe at least initially. Uh, so I was, I was very surprised by, by classical music, and we've done a few projects with classical musicians uh, that have been amazing. That's an interesting, in interesting approach. Never would have thought that. I mean, electronic sort of kind of expect that, uh, but classical music was kind of a surprise. When did anything you want to add on that, or? Yeah, no, I was going to say the same thing as Jimmy. Like, like I think that um, you know the DJs and the electronic mu music producers have uh, a bit more of uh, you know, uh, they're in the technology a bit more, so they're used to using computers yep. and using programs, and and I think to, to, uh, for them it's a lot easier to grasp uh, a lot of the um, the the things that you use for for NFTs and for for crypto, uh, whereas like the traditional classic uh, musicians who are using instruments who are performing live mostly may not be able to to adapt as quickly. I've got a question next for Achilles um, for acing art in particular. So I mean, you guys got an interesting product. I mean, for your art image product itself. So you have kind of split the art into multiple layers and then people can kind of change it and then a different piece of art comes out. And then you kind of take the same concept and, and kind of make it into music where you have different stems, I believe you call it, and then you can kind of change the composition and a different sort of music come out from it. 
curious to hear how do you, what was the idea behind this product and how much traction do you see a lot of interest in people kind of modifying the different composition how does the composition change like can anybody go in and change it or does it change based on weather for example um yeah so so for for async sort of one of the fundamental uh values that drove us towards uh this interactive um creation of music and consumption of music uh, was the idea of intimacy being sort of the reason why a lot of us engage with our favorite artists or musicians, right? We want to feel closer to them in some way. Uh, one way you can do that is by actively interacting with what they're producing in a canonical way, where you can update the sort of uh, objective state of a song and you can interact with it and contribute to it. So that was the sort of impetus behind it. Uh, what we found as we kept iterating on the product is that um, there's also something about owning uh, your own unique mix, right, of, of, of one of these programmable works where you you feel an added sort of intimacy because you have a musical object in your hands that sort of like no one else does, but stems from an overall collection of similar sounding songs. So we are currently pivoting actually to a new product that we're launching uh, very soon, uh, which we call Music Blueprints. Uh, the idea there being that mm -hmm. you know artists still upload uh, stems with different states, but the collector at the end, not rather collecting a state or, or, or a stem collects a unique random combination of the different states together as the artist intended them, right? So what this allows for uh, really is the a, a scalable creation of a collection of unique songs that are nonetheless belong under the same umbrella, right? So we what we hope to, to achieve with this is uh, a similar community sense uh, on the musical side that PFPs have actually succeeded in, right? Of course, there's a lot of bad things about PFPs, but one of the good things that they've provided is this feeling of being part of a group. And I think imbuing this with, with okay. music and creativity, I think might be very interesting. So I, I'd say intimacy uh, would be the main thing. And this is how we're trying to, to achieve that. So trying to understand this a little bit further. So like this typical PFP project, we have 10,000 NFTs in a collection. And are you trying to replicate that and it, with this blueprint where there's like a master blueprint and various uh, and different variations of, of the song and I don't know, 10,000 music NFTs in that collection, something like that? I would say so. Yeah. So it's, it's what I call like a semi-fungible model. Right where you have, okay. uh, they're all unique and non-fungible, but they come from the same blueprint, right? So there's some instruction at the beginning where it says there's ten, 10 possible drum trunks here, right? Maybe some of them are 808, some of them are like jazz drums, for example. There's ten different vocal variations, maybe different lyrics, different perspective uh, to perhaps different effects, right? So the idea there is that when you create one of these pieces, you're creating a potential of many pieces. Uh, you're not doing just one sort of like honing in the work, which I think as a musician myself, starting off doing this is very interesting. Usually when you make music, you go down, down the specifics. In this case, the further you go along, the more you open up the possibilities. Uh, and then eventually you, you sort of deploy that on chain and collectors mint a unique random combination. So what you achieve is, you know, you have all these different songs that are unique, but nonetheless sound good, right? Because the creator has like thought about the different possible combinations um, without the uh, original artist putting in the work to create a thousand different songs. Um, so they're able to capture a sort of very good economic value, I think, economically makes sense, right? In the same way that PFPs sometimes make sense, while also maintaining the underlying creative integrity. Um, and again, creating this community ethos, right? Like I have this version, my vocals are like reverb, maybe they're more rare. Um, you know, your your vocals maybe like are the, the female vocalists, for example, and we can sort of even trade them, right? So it creates this collectible nature for uh, for music. And I think I think it's a quite an interesting product that we, we, we want to experiment with. It's a bit um, similar, but I guess not very similar, but uh, it reminds me of uh, Euler Beats a little bit, uh, but, but it kind of randomly gets generated via the, the hash and then there's multiple, I mean, duplicates of that, I suppose you have the one on one and then, but yeah. Um, okay. Um, curious to hear from the three of you, actually, you guys are all musicians. Have you guys personally released music NFTs into the market uh, under your, 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 your name, for example? When the young have you released one. anything? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I've uh, I've released a bunch. Um, the latest one is like what you see behind me here is the Rare Vandal. And the Rare Vandal is a cross chain uh, release. Um, at, like, it, initially, I intended to release it across six chains. Um, I think oh, that, wow. you know, the, the, the reasoning for that is really about. Um, you know, the idea of interoperability and connecting with audiences who uh, participate in the various marketplaces and platforms that are on the different chains that are out there. And of course, uh, I'm also on Emanate, I'm on Tamago, I'm on Audius, like in terms of streaming stuff. Um, and 
I, I think that that uh, you know just getting getting my music out there. I have a large back catalog as well, which I'm gradually slowly releasing as the Rare Vandal, which I kind of had changed my name from Vandal to the Rare Vandal, given the nature <laughs> of the space. Um, and it's just been really exciting to be able to experiment. And I think that you know, like given uh, the Web two industry model you there is no experimentation you just simply you know release like a formulaic you know put it out get it out there across all the platforms and do your promo and here we can do something very interesting and use the metaverse spaces like crypto voxels or reality chain or near hub for example as as a place where people can congregate and listen to the music and interact with it as well as then go to the various platforms across the chains to purchase the NFT. I mean, my, my first foray into the NFT space was actually a release I did with my band uh, early last year. Uh, we're working on it since uh, August 2020, so fairly early on, I think, although we released in the sort of when, when the hype was happening. Uh, yeah, I started, off, I started off in DeFi. That was my, my sort of, uh, you know, crypto uh, segue. Uh, discovered NFTs, um, discovered music NFTs, and I was like, this makes so much sense in so many levels. Uh, and so, yeah, that was the beginning, and I liked it so much that I thought I'd sort of do more of that uh, and less of my own music, although I still continue to make music as well, of course. Jimmy, yeah, for me, um, I, I have, I have. I mean, my focus hasn't been on music creation for a number of years since the beginning of Eminate, right. really. Um, I'm really focused now on, like, giving back and helping people um, who might be aspiring creators themselves to to kind of show them that this new stuff can change the game. But yeah, I have got, um, I've minted some audio NFTs um, of my sort of passion project. Um, but one of the exciting things that we've done as a bit more of an experiment was we, we, um, we helped Dead Mouse into the NFT space back in December 2019. And also Weezer, um, another band and um, not so much audio NFTs, like these were more sort of, you know, multimedia style things um, and collectible cards. But what that did lead to for them is like a full immerse, immersion into into this space now. So, yeah. So, I mean, one of the benefits, I mean, the, the narrative, the, the, the advantages that we talk a lot about Web3 is that it's about this intermediating the, the middleman. And, and it's just in, in the music industry, it's all about the record labels, the record labels take a lot of, uh, have a lot of power, cream a lot of profits. Uh, we start seeing artists going independent, but uh, at the same time, labels still hold tremendous power because they kind of hold control the distribution of the music. Um, curious to hear, like, do you think music NFTs will help uh, accelerate the trend of artists going independent and help flip the balance of power between artists and record labels? I, like the first thing I want to say, like on this topic, is I don't necessarily think all record labels are evil. I think, like, as okay. long as they're creating value and community and um, a collective and it builds strength, like that adds tremendous value. So I think, like, you know, defining an independent artist as them by themselves is not quite the same as also including that independent community or label or whatever else. So you know, now digital music is collectible. Now digital music is tradable. Now digital music is giftable. And this all can be done without like a platform like Apple and Spotify. So in that sense, it's really exciting that like we've sort of shifted and that that stuff's happening now. This isn't what's next for NFTs. This is like now. Um, and so I think that's really exciting. And I think Vandal definitely has some stuff to say about that too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, with Dow Records, it's like we're we're trying to imagine or reimagine what a record label looks like, and and how that is, uh, you know, when it comes to releasing an artist's music and facilitating this release and onboarding them into the ecosystem, as well as you know, not not being exclusive or say signing artists per se. It's more about being that distribution point and being that onboarding point for artists and, and allowing them to get involved in the community such as like the various DAOs that we've created so that they can get a sense of what this web3 space is and they can get out there and explore and try the different platforms that are available to them because you know just like all the platforms are just another avenue for an artist to release their music 
it's it like just like Spotify is, just like Bandcamp is. Like, I don't see why artists can't use those platforms in conjunction with all of these Web3 platforms. But in the end, I think they'll see the benefits of the Web3 mm -hmm. platforms over the Web2 ones until those catch up to where we are now. I would I would agree with this. I, I think the notion of a label is not sort of a priori bad, right? So I've I've had major label deals that were horrible for me, right? Um, I've had independent record deals that were pretty good. Um, I think you know I think there is still a, a role in a label, um, even in, in, if the space were to become sort of the the um, you know the the sort of most uh, where most music happened, and that is early stage uh, discovery and incubation. Right, mm. which is not how labels work now. Uh, in an ideal world, you have a label which sort of steps into the unknown artists, right? Who who have sort of an ear for potential, uh, who have this curatorial power and interest and genuine sort of like empowering uh, interest, and would provide some funding for some early stage song creation for some demos, especially for bands who are not able to do it on their bedroom, right? Some early promotion would take a smaller chunk, perhaps, of their earnings than like the 80, 90 percent we're seeing now, and then you can cr continue crowdsourcing, right? Then you can enter into the DAO arena. Um, I feel like that that's the role that labels should be playing. And I feel that that's the role that labels might play once we unlock the economic potential with NFTs, right? There's no reason for you to sign a record deal in perpetuity, which has like five option deals, 360, take the money from your merch, et cetera, for what essentially is an advance for one album, right? Once there's more competition there from crowdfunding and the ability of these tradable tokens, I think that might redefine the role of the labels, something that's better for them as well, right? Like it, it would help the labels out if they, I think it makes more sense as an economic model this like early stage focus. So I'm curious to hear, so I'm not involved with all the intricacies of record labels. Art, most artists are pretty much signed to record labels. Can they release their songs as music NFTs uh, or whatever? Can they release things uh, as NFTs at the moment or do they have to get approval from their record label? And that is one of the big stumbling block from music NFTs uh, taking off. <laughs> that depends on how hip their labels are. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure if all labels have a sort of crypto or NFT clause uh, in their contracts. Um, but, but I think this is something that all artists should explore, whether like uh, in conversation uh, with their label, uh, depending on if it's a major or an independent label. I think that uh, really this is an opportunity. It's just like another opportunity to distribute their music. And I think this is a, a great way to build community and connect community directly to the artist as opposed to having these walled gardens as what Spotify and, and the streaming services are today. And that's like in in the way I see it is bringing music back to the physical format, but in digital, and that's where NFTs are. It's it's that merger of physical and digital, and I think that's what's really exciting for us to experiment with and for artists to get out there and ask the questions, talk to their labels, you know, um, and get out there and and mint some music NFTs and maybe ask a question later. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it would all depend on what their deals are. Like some artists might have a single deal versus an album deal or a 10 album deal. And um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. There's no kind of uniform mm -hmm. around it all. But I think like Vandal said, it you need to explore it. And like maybe you as the artist need to prompt or like sort of knock on the door and say, hey, guys, like this is going on. And again, like Vandal said earlier, like it shouldn't have to be, you know, replacing your spotify web 2 strategy it should be as well as and um yep. and i think like once people really kind of see like there is just an addition to what you can do with your music business um that's super valuable then yeah the opportunity is there to grab yeah i've seen a lot of i mean i mean the, the stats like how much artists get paid uh, on Spotify, I mean, it's like 0 0.003 cent per stream, like basically less than a cent per stream. Like artists, I guess, basically getting paid very little for, for all these things. And I've seen like people like Mike Shinoda saying that he's made a lot more money from selling NFTs than any of them. And then, 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 then just, um, from, from web to from Spotify, Apple music and all, um, curious to hear like, like, like. 
do you see the same story as well of uh, artists monetizing better from uh, music NFTs? And also, curious to hear, do you see artists monetizing more from primary sale or royalty from secondary sale of music NFTs? I, I think that, um, you know, music NFTs in a way allows an artist to connect directly with their fan or build a new fan base within this Web3 ecosystem. Um, you know, through experimentation and, and various other elements about, you know, let's say you purchase the audio NFT and that gives you access to, say, a live show or uh, other additional perks that, that artists can include together uh, with their NFT. And like, uh, to be honest, I, I don't know, like it, it's really dependent upon the artist himself and, and how far they want to take it and to, to what extent they want to use that NFT to, to boost their career. Um, and it is really another a whole new world. It, like you see artists coming into the space who maybe ha have had like success in the Web2 realm, but then they come into the Web3 realm and you know they see very little success because they think that maybe their audience will port over or people will know mm -hmm. who they are or they're just going to buy the nft and and i think there's there's like a whole new strategy that needs to be applied uh, to this web3 uh, space in general and, and i think that that's something that artists who are out there who are listening to this who are, who are watching this that i think need to think a bit outside of the box when it comes to how they deliver their their nfts um but i think i think maybe achilles and jimmy might have something to add to this i mean i would on, on the streaming front i would sort of echo uh, vandal's description of these things as physical digital objects right so you know since napster really or the early days of piracy what happened was we unshackled sort of like we freed the song from its material sort of like uh, you know a cage right like you were able to just these things just move freely online uh, that's a good thing for the for the for the fans right like I, I i pay 10 bucks a month and have access to what i would need to be paying thousands of dollars to get the equivalent vinyls that's a good thing uh for the fans obviously it's a bad thing for the artists because now they're you know the main way people were making money in the 80s and the 90s and the 70s was like vinyl records and cds etc uh we just you know alchemically were able to create a new kind of object right so like this sort of digital tokenized musical objects um are complementary to spotify it's a win-win you get to listen to the song to any song you want uh for free we should not go back to a world garden i think for consumption of music i think it's a good thing that your song is as free and as available uh to, to anyone as possible at the same time you can sort of do price discrimination to your fans the most sort of like uh you know hardcore fans of you will want to buy maybe your one of ones right if, if you get that stage or you know a cheaper sort of bigger collection of music you make so i think it's a better monetizable model to keep the song free uh, so streaming, you know, being a, being a sort of like a low barrier entry for, for fans, whereas providing a more uh, full experience, which is what everyone I think is trying to figure out now what that looks like uh, with tokenized music. Yeah, like I think throw the number out there of like a million streams, right? We've all kind of, well, maybe not all heard of this, but, it, you know, a million streams on Spotify might bring you 4K, $4,000. Now, that's a lot. <laughs> and actually to dig a little bit deeper the songwriters if there was one of them would take 750 dollars of that 4k right so like you're kind of looking at this this model that is incredibly um yeah i guess uh, uneven to the value to the creators okay so the one thing i will say and this is just a little plug but currently we pay 10x um of what spotify does we're on our web3 streaming platform um, and, um, we've seen artists earning more than ever before. Like, so I was just chatting with a, a young guy in our community that, um, sold, you know, $45 worth of NFTs in a couple of hours. And he, he just showed me his Spotify stats and he hadn't ever made that up in a month. So like, it's just that instant access to value that you can offer to your super fans that really want to support you. Um, and, and that's incredibly valuable. Um, and, and I think like, if you can turn a thousand fans to a hundred that like, are just waiting for whatever you drop, or maybe it's more than that. But the, the point is there's like a direct, there's a direct relationship there mm -hmm. with people that do want to get behind you and support your career, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically what we're seeing is that internet's kind of enabling all the direct communication. That's kind of what we saw with Twitter, with Instagram, like the artists being able to communicate directly with their fans. And now they could directly monetize via music NFTs, for example. Um, I'm curious to hear, like, um, like you mentioned songwriter early just now and, and in the music value chain, like uh, obviously the, 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 the creator, the musician itself is not the only player in the, in the space. There's a lot of people maybe taking a cut in the music. Um, in music NFTs, it almost seems like the musicians are the only person taking the cut or am I wrong? Do you see a role for songwriters and all the other players in the value chain? Yeah. To come into I mean, like, like look at Kanye, right? Some sometimes he's listed like 25 writers on his records or whatever, you know, there's so many, there's so many things that go into records, um, in the process of creation to engineering, to, to everything that it, that doesn't get served to the public. Like you're looking at Kanye as a performer and sure he's, he's a genius. Um, you know, no matter what your opinions are on the guy, but, um, it's, it's super important that everyone gets their share. Um, and I think like, you know, the stat that I threw out before, it's um, the, the, the song itself, the recorded song takes the majority lion's share of, you know, the total value of what comes back. And the songwriter only gets about, I think it's like 15.3% of that total value. And so there's, a, there's not to go too deep into it, but there's fights in the Supreme Court of America trying to change that value split between the writers and the um the record uh rights ownership so uh that's my sort of view on it all someone else wants to jump in yeah i i would say that you know for a lot of what i've done as an independent artist uh, in the nft space is like a, a lot of times what what i find is the visual artist the person who creates like the cover art and and the visual aspect of a release usually gets paid out, uh, you know, get gets bought out from the beginning. And what we've done is included this visual artist in the splits um, for the NFT, as well as like the producer. If I work with DJ Lethal Skills and it's me and Skills, and we create the track, and I'm the MC and he's the DJ and producer, and then we have a, a, a another artist creating the cover art. There's three of us in on the splits. And then we can create uh, our audio NFT with the splits already assigned to each person at the percentage that we all agree upon, and, and then put that a like also on M and A where you can where you can add your percentages uh, on the on Dow Records where you can put your percentages as well. And and I think this is a beautiful thing because these percentages like they get automated, and when an NFT gets sold, they get split and sent out to each party. Uh, automatically so i think i think this is like a great thing whereas like a record label would have to absorb the cash first and then it would take some time for them to process and then send out individual payments to each person like the, this is a the beautiful thing about the blockchain is we can automate all of these splits and and that's what really like is like excites me about this and, and what we're doing with dow records like this is like a, a really awesome part of, of web3 totally yeah, and we, and like on the topic of that sorry like okay the incentive to hold on to the money by some of the record labels is is that incentive like they put that money in and they grow it and they grow that for them and then they'll pay out in like very very long um time periods and they don't give they don't give the profit that they make on top of that to the artists they keep it for themselves so anyway it's just an interesting interesting thing with automated payments and contracts like just to have that free flow and transparency it's it's such an incredible powerful thing yeah well, i want to add we also um sort of uh, allow for collaborative splits automatic routing in a smart contract right so i think it's great that everyone's doing that um also visual artists but the producers and songwriters i just wanted to quickly make a tangential note which i think on your sort of question about the different parties involved traditionally uh you know uh, the song is regarded to have like two elements, right? Like the publishing, the songwriting, and, and the recording. I think a better heuristic right now is that really it's like there's three elements to it now, right? You have sort of the the IP, right, which is the intellectual property. Uh, both publishing and recording uh, goes there. Um, then you have the object, right, which originally was 
probably the, the better way to understand is the vinyl record, like a thing you hold. It's not the IP, it's not the song, it's like a thing you hold. That, I think, is where we're sort of uh, trying trying to work on, is what kind of musical objects make sense. And then you have the consumable, right? Like the thing you hear, the sort of recording that plays in the radio mm. or in a streaming service. And I think there's innovation on all three verticals, um, right? So both on the IP side, uh, Vandal, I, I believe, like, obviously, you're, you know, the, the record the record side's there. Uh, we're working more on the object side. And then, you know, J Jimmy and other other players are, are also working on sort of like the last vertical. So I think it's really interesting to see different ways of innovating and experimenting and iterating on these different aspects. And they're becoming more apparent, right? The way that they're different and different monetizations and different creative outputs as well. Yeah. It's interesting you brought up because it seems like, like I mean, music has changed and IP stays IP. I mean, it can be sold, the rights, the back catalog can be sold. And then <clears throat> nobody, I mean, very little people buy vinyl. I mean, I used to buy CDs and cassettes when I was younger, uh, but those days and that, that market is gone, right? Uh, so it almost seems that the token is like the representation of the object you should talk about. And um, and then, and then the, the streaming platforms, the Spotify and all, it almost seems like they had a radio of the yesteryears, like uh, people used to listen a lot and, and get paid. Uh, but I guess the interesting thing is what does the object, the, the, the NFT these days, does it represent? Does it represent just uh, a copy of a record or does it also represent the IP? Do you kind of bundle the IP and the, and into the object as well? And that becomes more interesting if it does get bundled in there. Yeah, that, that's a slippery slope, <laughs> really. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's really up to the artists to decide what they want to do. You know, I, I've seen right. artists like put out uh, NFTs where they give like complete rights to anybody who purchases it. And, you know, there's, there's so many different ways you can release an NFT. Like you can even think about it for like a sync and licensing where you say, okay, you purchase this NFT at this amount, you get to use it like once or, or commercially uh, and you have the rights for it that way. Like the, I, I think that it opens up a lot of opportunities um, for not only the, the creative use cases of NFTs by artists, but also by labels, by distributors. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's, it's, it's uh, like, we're still so early that yep. all of us are really experimenting on how this works. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a contrarian because you know, I don't, I don't really kind of like follow the rules of the traditional music industry. I kind of like go against them in a lot of ways. And, and I think that uh, in, in that respect, you know, like allowing the artists the freedom to choose what they want to do with their IP, I think is extremely important. And, and, you know, to know that they can even like fractionalize the ownership of their IP, mm -hmm. like, you know, buy the NFT, put it in a vault, get, get a fungible token in return, fractionalize that ownership, put it on an exchange, you know, create a liquidity pool, do all kinds of crazy shit around that, you know? And, and I think these are the type of experiments that, that are going to, to create the products of the future uh, for artists and by artists. Yeah, like um, we launched our beta platform yesterday, actually. And one of the things that we deployed Congrats. was this. Um, yeah, thanks. It's been awesome. Um, well, what we've done now is made NFTs streamable, right? And you can also put like access around that. So there's two examples I'll quickly talk about. <clears throat> the first one, to your point of what do these things look like? Can, can they be collectibles or is it like a rights thing? I mean, yeah, like Vandal said, it could be either. And it should be up to the artist for sure. And I think when he said slippery slope, there's still some pretty gray areas around the fractional stuff, like <clears throat> on the larger scheme of things. However, uh, let's talk about the collectible side of things. Say there's 25 copies of a track minted. So what we've done on Emanate is put up a gate so that you need to own that NFT to actually stream it on the platform. So it's like a kind of accessing. And like one of the things I've been thinking about just to further that a little bit on the DJ side of things, like um, if the equipment that the DJ was playing to perform the music on, you could plug in your MetaMask or whatever, and it would read your record library and it could tell you what records that you own or have been given or gifted or traded to have permission to play that to an audience. Um, I think, I think mm. if hardware can integrate that kind of stuff as well, it would be super interesting. And I don't think it's that far off. Um, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, the, the other thing that we source, um, actually skills, I think it was his genius, um, 
so shout out again, brother. But essentially, we we deployed this functionality for this NFT access on our platform. And what um, what one guy, I think it was Kane Mayfield, came and did it was dropped an EP, and he attached like a, like a visual NFT that he's been selling to his community. To if you own that, you can unlock and listen all the tracks in that particular EP. So, so yeah, there's like it is all experimentation, like Vandal sort of mentioned. But you know, I think we all here on this call, what what I love and what I love to see and what I haven't been seeing enough of is like it getting shown in these sort of interviews and 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 showcases. Like we're putting our money where our mouth is, as well as having these kind of crazy experimental ideas, you know? Just one, one thing Chris, to hear. Yeah, like, sorry. Sorry. Yep. Um, yep. Go ahead. It's interesting. You, you mentioned sort of, you know, tapes and CDs. What we've seen in the last seven years is a crazy increase in vinyl purchases, right? People, people want objects. People want ways to signal patronage. People want ways to signal identity to their friends. People want something they can hold that like it's dear to them and that they can touch, right? Um, so, you know, our thesis is that this can be recreated digitally, uh, right? Like token gating is one of the things we're exploring, uh, for example, different sort of, um, things that this thing can, I, I call it vinyl steroids, right? Like it's, it's different things that we can unlock that are only possible in the digital domain. Uh, obviously the IP side as, as both, uh, Jimmy and Vandal, uh, talked about is still legally difficult and gray. I think we will have some yep. progress on that over the next few years, hopefully unlock even more things. Uh, but at this stage, yeah, we're, we're focusing on the object and we're trying to sort of, you know, clarify that. Got a question from one of the community listening into this call. I guess this one, maybe Vendor, you kind of briefly talk about it uh, early at the start. Like, um, oh, I mean, this question is always well and good for like large and medium sized artists that have their fan base and they can kind of utilize their fan base to kind of buy the NFTs. But most artists, like 99% of artists, have small undeveloped fans to pull uh, the fan base. So if you were a, a small time artist just starting out and interested in participating in the music NFT space, like how would you advise these artists to compete or build their fan base in this music NFT realm? I would, I would recommend the artists to learn about DAOs. And I would suggest that the artists form a DAO and invite their mm -hmm. fans to be a member of the DAO and that they can use the DAO then to distribute their music uh, to their community and have their community actively involved in the creation of their music as well mm -hmm. as the ownership of the music. And I think there's a lot of experimentation that can go on in, in this sort of DAO community space because it's like web three enables the artists to basically take control of their, their entire ecosystem and their career. And, and I think that not only making use of the various platforms that are out there for, for them to release their NFTs, but also to, to gather their fan base and onboard them. Because if you're the, you're the first person to onboard somebody into the ecosystem, they're going to remember you. They're going to be like, Hey, yeah, Vandal onboarded me. You know, he's like, help me out, do this, this and that, you know? And I think this is like, uh, um, it, it's a big deal because a lot of people don't know how to get involved in this space. And as an artist, if you have a product and your product is a, is an NFT, you know, to go along with your other products that might be out there in web two, you know, you have the opportunity now to build your community your core community and onboarding, I think is one of those ways that is, is like a, a really strong point. It's like the glue to bring people in and to reward them as well as to include them in, into ownership as well. <laughs> so maybe, maybe I want to, I mean, if you're running up to, I mean, I have last 10 minutes for, for this session today, but um, before we run, last two questions, I suppose, um first one is um if i'm most of us listening in uh, we're not musicians right but we may have interest in nfts uh, what advice would you give to someone interested in buying his or her first music nft like how do you choose the artist where do you find them uh, what is a fair price to pay maybe um, basically any general advice i suppose on music nfts on collecting our first music nfts i i think buy something you like you can't go wrong with that like there's 
you know, we everyone knows what's happening in the last couple of years, right? It's really easy to get caught up in the sort of greed cycle. And you're like, I'll buy this thing. It looks like it's hyped. I'm going to resell it for three times the price tomorrow, even if I don't like it so much. Usually you won't. Usually you sell it for a third of the price and you'll be very sad. Uh, so I'd say buy something you like. Make sure that you're not... I think slowly we're, we're going to be seeing a sort of segregation of uh, NFTs as investment vehicles and stores of value and consumables, right? So things that you buy for the sake of patronage, for the sake of listening to these things, for the sake of owning them. I would focus on the latter, right? But if, if you view this as investments, even then buy something you like, right? Support your favorite artists, support your favorite musicians, um, you know, be in love with the thing you're buying because what you're really getting is a connection with the person who made it. Um, so please try not to fall in the hype cycle. If you're good at that, like do it. If it's your first NFT, then probably you're not very good at trading. So maybe don't follow the hype. Yeah, I think like, Jimmy, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I'll just like the price point at the moment of some of this stuff is pretty far out of reach for a lot of people. And I think like that needs to change. I think like, I mean, f for me as a collector, like, or like a fan or whatever, um, trying to find high quality music is, is one of the things that is, you know, I mean, it's out there, but um, like sound X, Y, Z doing incredible things, but it's very well contained. Um, and yeah, price point is, is something that is again, out of reach for some people. Um, but one of the things that we're trying to combat by doing what we've done on Emanate is having like a place where you can go and just browse different NFTs and then click out to OpenSea or whatever the marketplace is. Um, so yeah, just that that's, that's my bias where I would check, even though it's still pretty fresh, but like, I know at least, you know, it might be $5 for a collectible or something like that rather than 500. So um, at least that's a good entry point um, that's accessible for everyone. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. This is something that we're doing with uh, Dow Records now. Like we're about to launch our alpha on May 4th with uh, Sound Splash, which is our 12 week, 12 NFT um, metaverse event series. And what we're doing is we're introducing a new sort of standardization for audio NFTs, um, which is in, in a way it's kind of like I don't know, it's like the iTunes of audio NFTs where, mm -hmm. you know, you look at uh, an album as $10 and each each uh, MP3 NFT is like 99 cents. And I don't think we've uh -huh. seen any standardization yet uh, with audio NFTs or NFTs in general, because most of the audio NFTs currently today are modeled after uh, the, the uh, crypto art NFTs in which where artists are allowed to sort of set the price and set the number of editions that they release. And the common question that I get asked is how many should I release? How much should I charge? And with that, I'm like, okay, well, it makes sense for us to now kind of introduce sort of a standardization model. And with uh, the Fona route, we like we call it the Fona route, uh, which is um, our NFT minting system. Um, I think that we're, we're able to kind of introduce this um, sort of standardization for audio NFTs mm -hmm. in the way that MP3s were standardized uh, with iTunes. And this just adds to the arsenal for the artist to choose what they want to do with their NFTs. They can then go because they own their IP. They can go then and, you know, do a one of one, you know, and multi layers and, and things on, on async music, and they can go and do other stuff and release it over on, on emanate and do all of the other things at the same time as have something, you know, for the public and, and onboarding at a lower price point. And I think that, that we need right. to kind of like, look at how we can onboard art, uh, onboard fans more so yep. than focus on this, uh, you know, trying to make mad money off of your audio NFT. All right, sounds good. I like, I like, I like how you kind of uh, actually you put uh, the investors versus collect uh, consumables. Like that distinction is, is it should be, it's not very clear right now. It's very weak. Um, I guess one last question, right? So, where, what do you see happening in the music NFT space in the next couple of years, and what do you think will be the biggest factors that will shape the industry this year? Open to all of you. 
It's a big question. Well, um, yeah, ahead, I was gonna. <laughs> Gee, I mean, the, we're we're at the we're at the sort of bottom level of all of this. I mean, we've talked about a lot of the points that this stuff's going to change the world. I think I don't want to get too ahead of myself with it all. I think like we've got a lot to focus on that's right in front of us now, yep. and I just want to keep it as simple as possible so that. <clears throat> I know this isn't the answer you're expecting, but just to simplify no everything so more people can get involved is that's all I really wish to see in the next however long that takes to onboard more people and yeah. get it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think at this point, like what musicians should focus on is developing their community and onboarding people. Um, I, I think that. Uh, like a lot of artists forget the impact of onboarding. Um, it is process. We are still very new in this ecosystem, and uh, you know a lot of people don't understand even how to manage their own wallet. You know, so these are the things that that really make an impact when when you're talking to your fan base as an artist. You know, focus on the on the onboarding aspect, and, and I think that with that, then then you can really build a solid community around what you want to do in Web three. So this is like I, I guess I guess something to speak to the arts about is is really just look at how you can build your community as opposed to like throwing NFT out there and expect you know people buy it or whatever. You know, just build build your community. I'd say that what we'll see this year is sort of the, the value proposition for music NFTs, particularly on the consumable side, uh, especially we're seeing like lower gas fees and more interesting distribution will become more apparent in the same way that uh, visual NFTs were uh, last year and the year before. And secondly, I think over the, the sort of longer period, we'll see a more seamless and congenial integration between the tooling that Web3 provides us with the traditional uh, methods of communicating between uh, artists and fans, their role in the labels there, the role of the streaming services there, I am optimistic enough to hope that this will be, uh, you know, a fairly interesting and uh, complicated and granular structure that nonetheless will be net benefited for both musicians and fans. I think that we will unlock a lot of value over the next few years. All right. Thank you very much, Wendo, Jimmy, Achilles, for taking the time to share your knowledge on music NFTs today to our audience at CoinGecko. It's been really insightful. I definitely learned a lot from you guys. Really appreciate it. And yeah, uh, also thank you KuCoin for sponsoring this meetup. So um, yeah, thank you a lot. And everyone, uh, thanks everyone for listening in to the CoinGecko meetup. There's over 2,500 of you listening in. So it's been awesome to have all of you. So yeah, thank you very much. And see you next month when we have our next meetup. Thanks so much, all. Talk soon. Thank you. Peace. Thanks for having me. Ciao. Hello, 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 everyone! It's so good to be back! GeckoCon NFTs Gone Wild was a blast! And we can't wait to up the ante with, wait for it, GeckoCon The Decentralized Future! We have a treat planned for you to welcome the advent of Web3. Decentralization is more than a buzzword. It's the future of World Wide Web with the mission of putting the power of the internet in the hands of the people. Just like last year, we're going to bring together thought leaders and innovators from across the globe to bring you insights into the creative economy, finance, governance, business, and more in our multi-metaverse event spanning two days. You can expect premium content and discussions in a series of keynotes, panel discussions, and workshops. Be sure to book your tickets. For more updates, visit our website. Hope to see you there.